Just a second. There are other people joining us in the meeting room. Thank you. So I, I want to remind people that uh, for this wellness session, if you're planning to ask questions, please join us via Zoom because we'll only be able to take questions via the Zoom platform. Uh, but if you're not asking us questions, it's fine. Any, any other platform is fine. Yeah? Okay, so now I'm going to show you a slide on wellness, the different aspects of well-being. So we're just going to be sharing screen. Just give us a sec. We're, we're all uh, adapting to technology <laughs> way of delivering. Life now. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> At least something's better than nothing. Yeah, but yeah. it's I, I would still say it's a blessing because totally. uh, you know, in this time of COVID, you yeah. know, we we all are still connected by technology. You're able to work, you're able to, you know, yes. get things done and still be connected with people. So we need the slide on those. The eight dimensions of yeah, the third third one. Side mic. Yeah, that one. Okay, so this is the eight dimensions of well-being. So if you look at it carefully, let's start with the physical well-being, the orange section on the left. So when we talk about physical well-being, it's everything to do with, uh, you know, your diet, your nutrition, your exercise, uh, movement. So everything on a physical aspect, the activity that you do uh, physically directly affects your well-being. And that is very, very important on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we go to the second level, the red level, which is intellectual. Intellectual is more about having an open mind and being open to expand your knowledge and skills. So at this time, it's being open to learning. There's so much available to learn online. Uh, also, you know, reinventing yourself. A lot of people have lost jobs, but if you're open to learning, you can reinvent yourself. So it all starts from having that open attitude of looking at the situation not as a not as a calamity or you know uh, taking it negatively, but more as it's a challenge. Yes, but I can handle it. I can equip myself with the necessary skills and the right attitude. So that's, uh, that's basically intellectual well-being. The next level is environmental well-being. So that refers to uh, your environment. Say, for example, you have a comfortable bed that you can sleep in. You have a clean house, you know. So your environment directly affects your thoughts, your emotions, and directly impacts your well-being. So environmental well-being is also, also important. Uh, the next level is emotional well-being. Now, in a challenge like this, we are bound to have ups and downs, right? You know, people have lost jobs, you know, a family member may be sick, uh, you know, there is a financial situation. So we are bound to go through our ups and downs. But the important thing is how you can manage your emotions and stay positive because that is going to be uh, the determining factor to your success, to the way you manage things, the way you handle your family. So that emotional aspect is very, very important. And that's uh, something that we're going to focus on in today's session. And then we go to the next level is financial well-being. Now, what is financial well-being? If, uh, you know, one has to worry about, okay, where's my food going to come from tomorrow? So even though uh, you know, you've lost a job, is do you have savings enough to last you for the next few months, next year? So to have that peace of mind, to have uh, you know, a structure in place for your finances is very, very important because if that's not there, you're gonna be stressed out, you're not gonna be able to sleep and that's gonna impact uh, your well-being. So financial well-being is another important aspect of well-being. Uh, the next level is social well-being, is how uh, in this time are you connected with people?
people around you, especially having a support circle around you with your family, with your loved ones who you can count on. You know, uh, people are under lockdowns in countries, you know, they can't even step out of their houses. But are you connected on Zoom? Are you connected on the phone? Uh, because if you don't have that social connection, there are cases where people get into depression, people commit suicide. So having that support structure in place is very, very important. So having that social well-being is important. Okay. Now, the other level is spiritual well-being. Uh, spiritual well-being is uh, doesn't necessarily mean spirituality, but it means like having... Uh, you know, a meaning and purpose in life, living a very fulfilled life. So a lot of people live their life is in the morning, they get up, they go to work, come back and that routine goes on and on. But when you are living a life where you're living it passionately, where you're living, you're enjoying what you're doing, you're in the flow, uh, you know, and you're not only for yourself, you're living life for yourself, but really contributing to the greater good, contributing to so many people, then your life becomes very, very fulfilling. So you wake up in the morning, you're not like, oh my God, I don't want to go to work. It's not like that. It's like you wake up with the zest, you wake up with the energy. Yes, I have another day to go get my things done, to really live my purpose and really enjoy what I'm doing. So that is spiritual well-being. Then there's op occupational well-being is also finding personal satisfaction in what you do. So that's more about finding the flow in what you do, enjoying what you do. So that's another aspect. So these are roughly the eight dimensions of well-being. And in our upcoming workshops, we will be focusing on different, different aspects, different, different topics to give you an idea, to give you uh, tips, techniques, uh, you know, on how do you manage yourself on different aspects so you stay healthy and happy. So that's that's the goal of it. So uh, and today our focus is more or less going to be on the physical and the emotional aspect of well-being. And I'm very, very proud to announce our uh, brilliant speaker today, Malini Hemlani, who's with me, who's a dear friend. She's an expert hypnotherapist, nutritionist, and her passion is really to share with people on how do you create happiness? How do you release pain, negativity? Um, and also she uh, gives wonderful, wonderful tips on nutrition, uh, you know, on diet. So we have a lot to learn from her. So without further ado, I will pass it to Malini. Um, actually, before that, I would like to also ask Malini, you know, today we're coming out of a pandemic. Uh, countries are gradually opening up and, you know, some people have lost jobs. Some people have lost a loved one even. And uh, it's not easy and people are facing immense challenges. People under lockdowns are not allowed to go out and, you know, some people can't even go for a haircut and they get stressed out. They get emotional about these things. So how does one release all that? I mean, how, where does one start in, in a global challenge like that? So Malin, maybe you can start. Thank you so much, first of all, honey <laughs> and Mahesh for having me. It's wonderful. I mean, it's so good to be uh, having a community and sharing space with people like uh, them. And, uh, you know, so when I becomes we, illness can become wellness. So we need to, first of all, start with a support system and community to, you know, share our personal space with someone. So a very good question, um, honey, that you put up is uh, about... See, a man always goes through these five psychological stages, which we need to understand. Now, we all have our problems. We have solutions to it. But what we need to know is have a deeper understanding about the root cause of it. So because what is on the surface will probably go away. But again, life will form a pattern and it will keep coming back. So the root is important to know. So you've got to know about these five stages that happen. It's a philosophy called the Kukla Rose model. That when a human goes through any tragedy, natural disaster, loss of relationship, or anything to do, even like I'll keep the COVID in mind at the moment and speak, you pass through these five uh, stages. The first stage is that of denial. First of all, you are in denial that, okay, the virus has happened. Where did it come from? Okay, if it's happened over in this particular country, it's not going to come to my country. It's not going to happen to me because I look after myself. My immunity is great. I'm clean. So first of all, it's denial. 
that how did it uh, happen you know and why uh, like it can't come to us so now corona has come to you <laughs> so what is the next stage the next stage is that of anger so anger is always directed at the environment around you and the people around you so you are ticked off and you're angry about okay i can't go to work i can't go outside my social life is all gone for a toss the kids are in the house they're harassing me so there is anger everywhere so it's all around the energy is all around now you have to understand that anger makes no difference to anybody around you it just hampers your immunity and immunity is something that you need the most at the moment so Absolutely, anger yeah. just destroys all of that you know then the third stage is that of it could be low moods it could be bad moods it could be minor depression or it could be major depression so that's the third stage so after getting angry angry you know it's not making a difference to anybody then it's all coming within you so you go through this moods of guilt frustration depression and uh, you know you feel low and again what does this do this hampers your immunity your immune system is gone for a toss again and more organs tend to get affected so every negative thought has a negative effect on the cell just like a positive thought has positive effect on the cells so that we need to understand very well then you come to the fourth stage of bargaining bargaining is like why me oh god and you know you start complaining that how could this happen to me i'm so particular about everything i'm so good so bargaining is a stage when you start questioning yourself and that is actually a good space and stage to be in because when you question you start also thinking about answers so this is a good stage and this is where you go seek out for help either outside or inwards wherever but you will begin questioning and this is where therapy begins so bargaining if you are at that stage it's a good stage to be at so first identify at what stage are you at and then the last stage that is acceptance so now by this time you've got used to living with the virus okay you're taking your precautions you're wearing your mask wearing gloves keeping things clean around disinfecting everything eating a uh, healthy food clean food at home so now you have accepted that the virus is there it may be there to stay for long or it may just disappear but i have accepted that and i'm fine with it so this is the great and the best stage to be in when you accept solutions coming to you so for that you have to first acknowledge the problem and then you accept it so this now a wise person who does a lot of self work on a daily basis who meditates and moves into the spiritual growth goes from stage 1 that is of denial to acceptance doesn't go through the other stages so this is where you need to work on yourself that you don't have to go through the stages of anger and the stages of depression to you know reach an emotional point so i guess we all have to strive to you know go from denial to acceptance because it it becomes much easier when you accept a situation uh you you're you kind of are in that positive mind frame where you say okay who can i be despite whatever is happening outside of me you you kind of get, take back that control from yourself and say okay uh, yes. i can do this or i can do yes. that you start taking charge you start taking responsibility and that's when your life's remote control is in your hands and you know your power is in, in you yeah you that's know. that's exactly yeah. So so tell us a little bit more like how can you know once you come to that acceptance stage mm-hmm. how can one manage your thoughts and emotions because you know constantly there's negativity around you all the time so see honey you have to first of all again understand and accept that situations around you may change may not change they can be good they can be bad nothing is constant change is something that is happening all the time So again you have to accept that and the simplest thing that you can do is keep your mind in the present. So when you're in the past you're either going through feelings of guilt, anger, irritation or you know or if you're living in the future then it's all about anxiety. So in times of today like you can't be a pessimist being an optimist may some may disappoint you at this point I would say be a realist. So a, a person who's a realist is very much in the present and it's all about today. and a very simple tool and technique i would tell you is to just breathe <laughs> breathe of course yeah. we okay. can't live without it <laughs> yes breathe 
it's breathing is the only thing that will make you stay and be in the present because the breath is all you have. Now, um, again, when asked that, okay, breathing, like I'm breathing all the time. But the question you ask yourself is, are you breathing correctly? How do you breathe? Can we show one example of cleansing breath? This is something that, uh, of course, your pranayam, bastrika, and all of your intuit, it's an amazing tool, but you need practice. You need an expert to help you out with that. But this, what I'm telling you is even your child can do, you can do anytime while you're cooking, you're in the house, you're out socially or wherever. This cleansing breath will help you balance your chakras and will get you to the present, will give you grounding. And if you're experiencing any sort of emotions like anger, irritation or like frustration, this will restore the balance in you. And it is very simple. So yeah. let's just try this out. Yeah, so this, this is more like taking uh, baby steps, you know, to yes. learn breathing. Uh, as for Bastrika and the other breathing techniques, we, we will hold future workshops to teach you more on that as well. But today, let's focus on, uh, you know, the, this breath th so breathing this technique. Is simply called the cleansing br uh, breathing. And I will tell you why it's a cleansing breathing. And Honey, again, beautifully gave us a hint that this is a baby step. <laughs> so we go back to the baby. If you've seen how a baby breathes, a baby, when uh, he or she breathes, takes a deep breath in. And when she breathes in, the diaphragm and the stomach expands when inhaling. So kind of do this with us, yeah? Yeah, please do it and see how uh, uh, you know nice you feel. So take a deep breath in, there's no rush at all. Let the stomach <laughs> expand no all doubt. the way in the stomach. Feel the cleansing and the gentle relaxation in the stomach and very gently. Through the nose. So when you breathe in like that and when you exhale, the stomach contracts. And what we do, we do the opposite. So this is what we are doing and we are just not breathing correctly because of which we are, our organs are not getting enough oxygen and we are not able to function well and there is a sort of a chemical imbalance. So just breathing correctly is mandatory. So try this and I would say uh, do this every once in every hour or once in every 30, uh, 30 uh, minutes and you'll see a big difference in your health. You find yourself totally relaxed, composed and grounded. I just did that before I started this talk so to get grounded. Yeah. So, you know, it's very safe to say that in today's world, we are living in what is called the sympathetic uh, dominant where like our body has a network of... Uh, which comprises of the brain and the spinal cord and it's called the central nervous system. So there are two moving parts, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And they both are opposites. Now, most of the time we are in the sympathetic nervous system where we are not breathing correctly. We are running here and there and you know, we are like uh, breathing too fast and uh, that is kind of increasing the heartbeat, the cortisol level and so on. So basically, when you are in a relaxed stage, you are engaging the parasympathetic nervous system. And in regards to healing, this is extremely important because what it does is that when you're in this state, the body dilates the blood vessels and it releases pain-killing endorphins to promote and aid and speed up the healing system, which is much, much needed at this moment. So hence, you'll find that babies, animals, they recover and they heal much faster than the adults do. So it is as simple as this. So yeah, breath. So breath is basically healing. And you know, they say everything is breath, right? I mean, we can't live without breathing. Absolutely. So understanding and learning the correct way to breathe is very, very important. And as Malini said, it's so simple as, you know, you put your hand on your tummy and when you breathe in, if your tummy is coming out like a baby, that means you're breathing correctly. Yes. And when you're exhaling, if your tummy goes in, that's correct. So that's yes. how you kind of, uh, you know, gauge and verify that you're breathing correctly. So you can try that at home. Yes, totally. And you will find an instant change. In one minute, I kid you not, you will find an instant change. You'll be more in the present. You'll have clarity in my, of mind. And when you have clarity in of mind, you make better decisions. So you make better choices and we all know that better choices will lead to that consequence as well.
Yeah. So that's that's great. You know, again, breathing is very important. So how can one stay balanced and sane or, you know, how, how can one stay positive in such circumstances? Uh, again, honey, I would say everybody's mind is like a thumbprint. It is an individual. So everybody's problems and uh, solutions may not uh, be in sync. So what is my problem? And suppose we are facing the same problem, but we may have different solutions to deal with it because we're two different individuals. So for that matter, even if we were siblings, we are still two different individuals. And I'll explain why. Because uh, can we have the slide on the conscious and the subconscious mind, please? So for that, you need to understand, first of all, what is the mind? So the mind is your powerhouse and the pit of the mind is in the gut. So the gut and the mind are related. Your mind and body are not separate. What is work happening here will affect the gut. What happens here will affect the mind. So you have to work in conjunction. And at all points, these have to be in sync. So your mind has a conscious mind, which is like we at the moment, like how we talk to you, we are answering questions. It's the intellectual mind. It is the 10% of your mind. It has the willpower. It has a long-term memory, it has the logical thinking, it has the critical thinking. And then we have the subconscious mind, which is 90%. Your subconscious mind is 6,000 times more powerful than the conscious mind. Wow. Yes. So your subconscious mind does not even sleep when you're sleeping, unlike the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. So all your belief systems, your emotions, your habits, your uh, protective reactions, your long-term memory, imaginations, intuitions, all stored there. Like when you explained the eight dimensions earlier, so they all had uh, different influences on the subconscious as well. So right from via age zero, uh, memories are stored in the subconscious mind and then they freeze till we are age 14. Our suggestibility develops, means after which the reasoning develops and the way we think. So if you want to have positive thoughts, it all starts with a thought. The thought has a perspective. That perspective comes from the subconscious mind. So maybe my reaction to a lockdown would be different. I would be irritated, angry, oh my God. And maybe honey would be like, yeah, it's fine. Okay, I have books to read. I have Netflix to catch up. I have phone <laughs> calls to make. So you see how two different perspectives would think. Mm -hmm. So. It's the perspective. And if you want to make change on the perspective, you have to do it at the subconscious mind levels. You have to release old belief systems, habits, emotions that are no longer serving you a purpose. Release them to make new ones. So it is literally like the center processing unit of a uh, computer where you release and put in new data. Wow. Yeah. Good. Yes. So like, for example, we have a situation, uh, thought, oh, we have the slide, right? Yeah. Uh, can we take the, uh, the next slide, situation, thought, that's right. We just wanted to show you a slide to elaborate yes. further yeah. on that. So wow, the, the subconscious mind, yes. mind person, it has a huge impact. It has a very huge impact. So every, uh, so the changes are best made from the subconscious level for it to stay permanent. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like how we have a situation, uh, like we have COVID at the moment, then the thought to it, like I said, the thought, the perspective it gets, it's positive, negative, it's reaction, it's response. Yeah. It is, uh, so that makes a big difference. Then that perspective later gets an emotion and that emotion then becomes an action. So which is the behavior? So you could either have a flight reaction or you could have a fight reaction. So your personality decides that. And the negative and the positive? Yep. Yeah. So here, um, honey, I would like to also elaborate, like this is another tool you can take back. It's, it's called the flip module. Um, like, you know, our earth, we live on earth so it works on the principle of duality so we have the north pole we have the south pole we have uh, good we have bad we have day we have night so if there is positivity there is negativity also so there is duality which means if there is a problem then 
there's there a is solution, a solution too. So this is a flip module. Again, it is a very, very simple module. Uh, your children can practice, you can practice. You don't need a rocket science for this. I would say that uh, if you're feeling any negative emotion um, or like an emotion which is draining you down, it is fine. Don't make a big deal out of it. It is a defense mechanism to protect you. So you feel those emotions. So first of all, understand that it's fine to feel those emotions. It's absolutely okay. You're human. You're not God. Second, acknowledge them. Acknowledge that, okay, these emotions do exist. Like fear, hate, anger, sadness, despair is there. Now, does it make me feel happy? Does it make the environment around me happy? No, it doesn't. So then you have the flip module, which we go on to the other side of the darkness. So we go to this side where it's positive. So let's say fear. It's nice that you flip your fear either for faith or for love. Like, okay, I have faith in my body. I have love for my body. So I'm going to keep it healthy, clean. I'm going to do everything for my mental and physical right. selves to yeah, yeah, yeah. You you could kind of even take this yeah. as an exercise because, uh, you know, the next time you feel fearful, you know, instead of saying, yes, acknowledge the fear emotion within you, but you could say something like, instead of saying, I'm scared or I'm fearful, you could say, I have faith. Yes. I have faith that the universe will take care of me. I have faith that a higher power, you know, will take care of me. So your language determines your reality so your language has power so be careful with the kind of words that you use i'm not saying don't feel the fear definitely feel the fear acknowledge it and flip it using your words so uh, you could say so say if someone is worried about their finances say you know I i'm stressed out say you know i uh, i'm calm i can handle this you know i i'm uh, I'm financially abundant, even though at that moment you may not be feeling financially abundant. But if you say that um, I have abundance in my life, guess what? You are creating the right energy to have abundance in your life. So it's not about where you are today. It's about where you want to be. Yes. So that is the language you need to use. So instead of saying I'm nervous, say I'm calm. Uh, you know, I, I'm scared about my health or about my family's health. Say, we are all healthy. We are happy. So start using positive words. Again, you're flipping your emotions. So again, basically we're stressing is you have the power to change your reality to, through your words, through your emotions, through your language. So do it. Yes, totally. So here, like I would rate honey as an example here. As a person who has the knowledge, but she's spreading it. So this is how uh, she makes it positive rather than keeping it to herself. So giving. So instead of, you know, like just holding it, like holding on, but letting go. So letting go is also a lovely feeling. It makes you lighter. Like if you keep holding on, you will actually feel the stress in your body. And let me tell you one thing that negative emotions do make you weak not only in the mind and body but in the soul as well it has that profound effect it goes on to the cellular level to make you weak and the immunity goes for a toss and every Sorry. negative emotion affects a part of the body so why not flip it for positive because both these emotions are going to stay in That's your right. body so mm -hmm. might as well so you mm -hmm. have to make a choice as to which one is worth it and believe me you're worth it yeah. Okay, we go to the next slide. Now the, the effects of stress on the body. Yeah, yeah, the, that one. The, yeah, this one. You can start. This yeah. Same, yeah, like a very good example I would like to give you is about stress, which everybody is facing. Now, number one is what is stress? We use this word so often. I don't know if like many years ago, like our ancestors or elders even knew the word stress. They only knew that, okay, they have daily responsibility, yeah, uh, that uh, they have to do. That's their daily duties. But suddenly like stress has become such a modern word that even kids are using it. And, you know, the more stress, stress, stress you use, the more it's in your life and it is on your face. So how does the stress affect your body? 
in like I'll give you an example of the gut and the brain health. They are connected, like as I said. The communication system between the gut and the brain is called the gut-brain axis. You, your gut-brain axis is also connected through your immune system. So you see how beautiful your body is that if it's in a positive mode, everything is very well looked after. But the minute something goes, it's like one, 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 one by one. You know, it's a chain reaction. So any problem in the immune system can lead to inflammation with a number of brain disorders like depression, Alzheimer's. So depression doesn't come overnight. It comes through a series, of, through a pattern of negative emotions. So like, okay, you're eating everything correct, probiotics, you're having everything omega-3, you're having fermented food, but yet it is not helping because by now your body has become way too toxic and acidic. So the nutrients don't even stay in an acidic body. Now, what does the stress do? Um, like you will have mood swings like anger, depression, and this affects the entire digestive system that goes on a toss. You're constantly feeling like the bile is rising, you're feeling stomach pain, then uh, anything you eat gives you acidity. Uh, there's IBS, the ir irritable bowel syndrome, mm. a leaky gut syndrome. So it's just not worth it. And again, another cause of stress is uh, blood pressure. Like right now, everybody's coping up with too many pressures of life. Like how you mentioned earlier, there's financial, occupational. So blood pressure, again, is pressures of life. So this pressure of life goes to the heart. It affects your heart chakra directly. So you, uh, it can also lead to higher cholesterol and r the risk of heart attack is very uh, strong. So here you have to let go, let out the pressures of life. Things like neck pain, shoulder pain is also a cause of emotion where like the neck pain is caused by when you're being unnecessary stubborn. So your neck is a connection between the mind and the body. So when the mind and body are not in sync, it's the neck that suffers the most. And then that pain escalates to the shoulders with additional responsibility. Like, and this responsibility is not your daily duties, but it could be the excess baggage that you carry unnecessary, On your which shoulders. you call stress. Especially women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And uh, men, I hear, tend to feel, uh, get a lot of back pain due to the stress. And this will be the lower back. This is where the backbone, which connects to the hip, this is nothing but your root chakra pain, which is a chakra for survival. And this is all related to money. So when you're having business tensions, financial issues, because uh, um, so that's where you get that back pain. So I think yeah. it's, it's very important to have yeah. that awareness, as, yes. as Manani said, is so if there's someone's having a financial problem and back pain, there's a connection. Yes. If someone is constantly, you know, feeling angry all the time, you know, blood pressure goes up. So having that awareness uh, makes you kind of, uh, uh, you know, more uh, conscious of your, what you're feeling, what you do. So the next time you feel angry, wait a minute, calm down, do some breathing, you know, so kind of let that anger out of the system rather than rest in the system and then let it develop into something else. You definitely don't want that. Yes. So focus on release, release in any yes. way. Release in any way is very therapeutic. So just as we wake up in the morning and we go to the restroom, exactly. we feel very clean exactly. and very good about ourselves because we have released the toxins out of our body. When we are in the gym or when we are outdoors, we sweat. So sweat is also nothing released. In fact, sweat is nothing but burning your fat. So similarly, crying also is therapeutic. So when you cry, don't think that you're weak or anything is wrong with you. It is good to cry. Crying is therapeutic. So anytime if you're writing or you're talking to a friend or something and you feel like crying, please go ahead and cry. Now, what happens is how do you feel after you cry? If you feel good and if you feel light after crying, it's very nice. It's a very, very good sign. But if you're feeling heavy, then you're not in good space. Please do get help. Reach out to someone who can help you. Yeah. And another bad effect of stress, fear, is it makes your body very acidic. And 
uh, nutrients do not stay in an acidic body. Like women sometimes don't get their periods on time, they miss their periods because the body has become highly acidic due to stress and uh, you're putting on unnecessary weight because of the cortisol level. You're eating, you're exercising correctly, but still the weight is not going. That's because of the cortisol levels. The hormones have gone for a toss. So here now I'll talk about the acidic and alkaline part of it. So your body is supposed to have, the human body must keep its pH within a very narrow range in order to survive and function. So the normal range is 7.35 to 7.45, which is on the alkaline side. And our stomach has a pH of 3.5, which means the stomach already has a lot of acid for the purpose it needs for digestion. It can even corrode our key, an iron key. So the stomach is highly uh, acidic. So now if you can maintain a diet which is high in carbonated soda, it's uh, white food, uh, a lot of like uh, alcohol, then these foods or like a lot of non-vegetarian food, I'm not asking you to go off non-vegetarian, but uh, keep a balance, like keep your plate, yeah. yeah, limit your portions too and add a little bit more vegetables on the side. So when already in the scenario, we are going through quite a lot emotionally. Now, if we do not eat correctly, then again, the mind is gone for a toss. If we do not keep our gut clean. So the gut produces a hormone called serotonin. Serotonin is the happiness hormone. So if we do not keep the gut clean and strong at the moment, then we can't have uh, the production of this hormone going to be very smooth. So I highly encourage you to have an alkaline diet. In fact, a lot of people these days have gone into plant-based diets like yes, how we were chatting yeah. earlier. And you will be amazed that if you eat more, like if you uh, just add a bowl or two bowls of vegetables to your daily lunch, dinner, salads, breakfast, yeah. salads, raw, cooked or whatever, but a little bit of protein, carbs and let your uh, plate at the moment be 50 to 60% vegetable in every meal. You will notice your body getting more alkaline. There will be reversal of disease. Yes, it's known to reverse diabetes and uh, even hormonal issues in women. There have been women who are struggling to, uh, you know, uh, conceive and it's been easier for them with this alkaline diet. So this is adding a lot of fresh fruit, like at least two servings of fruits, a lot of vegetables, eat as much vegetables because they're very quick to digest and uh, uh, it helps like you it helps promote the functioning smooth functioning of your internal body gym so and again another tip i would like to give you is that when you're eating your fresh fruits eat it as a meal because if you eat it after your lunch or dinner then it will just settle in your body as sugar that you don't need but if you want to make the best out of your fruit the nutrients out of your fruit have it as a meal have it as a snack itself so uh, go, I highly recommend going alkaline at this moment. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, in fact, for, for those of, uh, you know, you who are vegetarian, it's an opportunity to add more variety to your diet, totally. you know, and try out something new, a plant-based diet. If not every day, some days incorporate uh, some more fruits, vegetables and try it out because it will have a huge, huge impact on your health, on your gut health, which is exactly why we all need to, you know, take care of our physical health. And remember, physical health is the basic, the starting point of the yeah. wellness uh, circle, wellness Good. wheel. So, and it's easier to do. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult for people to get spiritual, get into uh, uh, like therapy and things like that. But this is the easiest tool even a child can follow and you know, you have to lead by example for your child in the house. Yeah. And I would highly recommend the number nine and number 10 on the list because these are the most alkaline. And if you have them in every meal of yours and as much, you will be in great health, you know, great space. Absolutely, absolutely yeah. agree. So try out some of the yeah. alkaline foods that we've mentioned yeah. here. So the things around you are not going to improve. The situation may get or may not get better. But yes, the power of food will help you deal with it better. And then think about it. In this area, you, you hold the remote control yes. so you can change. And there's enough research to show that change in diet 
has an impact on the reversal of diseases. So it can totally cure and heal the body simply by diet also. So if someone is facing any such challenge, please share this information yes. with them. And uh, you will see like a big change even in your hormones. Like for everything, at least we women, we tend to, you know, like uh, give the uh, power to the hormones. That, yeah, it's the hormones that are playing the role. Yes, they play a very important role in your uh, daily life but yes you can be in charge of your hormones you know with the way you eat and with the, the other wellness tools that you uh, take up okay let's uh, quickly move on to cover a little bit about depression because uh, you know this has been in the news lately you know because of the challenge people have are getting into depression uh, you know certain uh, famous celebrities have actually committed suicide so what are some of the things uh, one needs to be aware of you know uh, if if one is sliding into depression or a dear and dear one you feel is not kind of looking so well can you please share some tips on uh, what quickly because we only have uh, sure. 15 minutes please again honey yeah. you very beautifully uh, gave a word awareness so to be in that stage of awareness you have to be in the present when you're in the past like your inner child is hijacking your present so you have to be very much in the present with these breathing techniques because they will give you clarity and for that, you need to understand what is depression. Depression does not come overnight. It can happen to anybody. It doesn't know caste, creed, socioeconomic status or gender. It uh, can just happen to anyone. And there, the symptoms of depression I would like to bring out here is that if you feel anybody has it or anyone is facing it, so please help the person out or, you know, like make a note of what you're feeling. You have minor depression. Uh, like someone with minor depression will feel like a loss of energy, motivation, appetite, but they can still function normally. So this is like a state of feeling low. And uh, so it's a good stage to quickly reverse yourself. And then there is major depression. Any of the five symptoms felt continuously for two weeks or more. It's a red alert. Okay. Depressed mood most of the day, nearly every day. There is diminished interest in pleasures and all activities around you. There is significant weight gain or the opposite can happen. There's complete weight loss also. And uh, you don't really feel like eating. You will just be, or you will be eating anything emotionally, mindlessly. Then insomnia or hypersonic. So you can either not sleep at all or you will be sleeping way too much, like 15, 16 hours a day, just not getting up out of bed. So it has, this side to it it has this side there is no balance to it and then there is a lot of fatigue loss of energy abnormal restlessness so abnormal restlessness do not mistake this for high energy it is restlessness so where your entire vibration is like the internal vibration has gone for a toss it's not in sync it's not smooth feelings of worthlessness there is low self-esteem and a lot of guilt and this kind of feeling results from the past it has to do with childhood with a lot of incidents so it takes three incidents for it to validate your depression that oh i'm worthless so here the inner child uh, work is required very much required the person here is not grounded at all it's uh, they have no sense of grounding diminished ability to think concentrate focus there is a recurring thought of death and suicide so when someone threatens that, oh, you know, I'm going to go and commit suicide, it simply means that the person needs help, is asking for help. Because if someone has decided they want to commit suicide, they just go jump out of the window, they hang, they will just go, they will not inform. Symptoms of depression or what I would say like triggers, what triggers? These are very important pointers to know and make note on because triggers is something that brings in the fight, flight, the reaction and the response in every individual. So the triggers are stress, of course, number one, fear. We all are born with two fears. The rest of the fears are conditioned by the environment, family, and elsewhere. Traumatic events, genetic factors, personality type is very important. So this is where the subconscious mind comes. Uh, you need to work at the subconscious mind level. Medications, uh, they have all sorts of drugs which can cause hallucination, unnecessary imagination, 
drugs and alcohol so when you are feeling very low skip the alcohol because it causes a chemical imbalance i'm not saying to go off alcohol but drink it when you're in a good mood it will give you that high you want and happiness but if you're having it when you're low you're only going to get more low it's going to give you that temporary sense of elation and after that it's a very very low state and hormonal imbalance so uh, a good diet comprised with the mind will help and chronic patterns of negative thinking so we pretty much covered up a lot of tools at the beginning for you and simple ones to take forward yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's great because yeah. uh, again if we recap you know we've talked about the five stages of of loss we've talked about the importance of breathing the importance of diet uh, the importance of releasing so there are lots and lots uh, you know and then there's meditation also so there are so many different tools yes. that allow you to release uh, you know negativity yes. and pain and get through this challenge so it's very important that we uh, become aware of ourselves and uh, it is your moral responsibility to look after yourself self care is the biggest care self love is the biggest love like if you see the sun and the duties the uh, uh, watch sunrise and sunset and just understand that how the sun gives energy to everyone and everyone without expecting anything in return so absorb that sun energy do the surya namaskar it's extremely helpful yeah yeah so uh, so what we like to do is we like to we have some time to take a couple of questions now uh, before we start the questions i actually wanted to show one more video clip of our i2a space and facilities uh, so we'll just uh, show you the clip <laughs> contact us okay so now we'll uh, move into some questions so if you have any questions please post them in the chat window in zoom and we're happy to take them or we can unmute you also yeah any questions so you can put uh, something in the chat if you have any questions um yeah regarding any aspect of well-being you can feel free to ask yeah one of the nicest way uh, to help your hormones your endorphins is definitely laughter and uh, they are doing a fantastic job with laughter yoga and laughter releases a lot of endorphins again like i mentioned endorphins are required for your healing they are your internal pain killers so laugh often <laughs> yeah la laughter is a great release and yes. uh, myself and my partner mahesh we are actually corporate wellness trainers we've been doing uh, running laughter yoga sessions for major companies like hsbc uh, the banks the government and we also uh, do stress management sessions on breathing meditation mindfulness uh positive psychology which is the science of happiness and in there also we cover uh, different aspects of well-being so we run a lot of workshops uh for corporates and now with the new i2a studio space we're also going to be uh starting those workshops here we're also going to be starting a new series uh, of workshops on entrepreneurship so how do you reinvent yourself how do you uh you know have a different perspective and not look at the situation from um you know oh my god perspective but more like take it a, take it as a challenge take it in stride and how to equip yourself for the future 
So we're going to be uh, focusing on different, different skills, different topics, bringing in different top uh, speakers as well uh, for new sessions. So do stay tuned. I mean, uh, you know, subscribe, follow us, uh, you know, hit the bell button uh, so that, you know, you stay tuned for uh, for such sessions. OK, uh, we have a question here. Uh, please, uh, hi, honey, please share how students can keep themselves focused on studies during these times. Thanks, Manisha. You're a good friend of mine. Hi, Manisha. I can't see you, but thank you for the question. Um, yeah. Uh, do you do you want to sure. say anything first? So the tools that I gave, they, have, mm -hmm. they were very, very basic ones, and especially keeping kids in mind. One is breath work, because breath work itself gives you focus. One of the nicest breath uh, breathing technique that you can do and uh, the kids can do, you can do is take a deep breath, inhale in four times. So you can try it with us. If and with that same count, exhale four times. This is very basic, whether you have high blood pressure or whatever, like, you know, which bastrika doesn't allow you to do. This is very basic. You can do it anywhere in your classroom and this will give you the mental clarity it will get uh, your wandering mind will get back to focus and nicest things for kids to do is yoga yoga is highly recommended because that brings in mindfulness in a person it builds your character to be mindful like the tree pose these asanas uh, any asana that requires you to balance your body is perfect for students so a must try yeah especially I, the tree pose yeah i i absolutely agree with uh, malani yoga definitely because yoga is not just about physical balance yeah. but it's emotional mental like even when you're doing uh the cobra pose you know yes. uh it, it teaches you to stretch it teaches you uh self-reliance it teaches you so many things so the balance posture or so many other postures when you do surya namaskar it creates flexibility not only in the body, in the mind as well. Uh, it keeps you away from pain relief. It keeps you away from negativity. So yoga is one tool. Breathing is another. Meditation, yes. Uh, again, meditation, a lot of people have this notion like, you know, I can't meditate. How do you guys sit for so long and meditate? You know, meditation can be as simple as a three-minute meditation where you're just sitting down, focusing on your breath. Just breathe for those three minutes. Thoughts will come, thoughts will go, and that's okay. Just observe them. Your job is not to stop yourself from thinking thoughts. Your thoughts will still come. Just sit down and observe for three minutes. If you do that every day, what happens is you notice the amount of thoughts reducing in those three minutes, and then you become better. Those three minutes become five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and so on. That's how you build a routine. So again, that's for mindfulness. Um, you know, again, for focus, uh, it's also very important to be disciplined in terms of your calendar. Like, you know, are you entering everything that, that you need in a Google calendar or any form of calendar? Being disciplined uh, is also important. So having all these techniques at the same time, being focused, being disciplined, being empowered to achieve your goals. So say if a student is, aiming to get a particular job somewhere in this difficult time. So they have to ask, who do I need to be? How many interviews do I need to do in a week, whether online or face to face? Uh, what are the kind of skills I need to learn in order for me to be successful to pass the interview and to also land the job? So uh, having a full strategy in place, uh, that is important. So in, the, in our future sessions, we will be doing sessions on Pastrika, on meditation, on different breathing techniques, on positivity, on resilience. Like how do you, uh, emotional resilience is very, very important, is how do you be emotionally resilient where suddenly you hear some negative news somewhere, suddenly, uh, say unexpectedly, a family member passes away. How do you manage? How do you balance your emotions? How do you stay calm? It's not easy, you know? So all those kind of skills, we will be, you know, focusing on them in our different workshops. So please stay tuned on that. So I hope, Manisha, this has given you uh, an idea for students on uh, how, how, to, how can, they can stay focused. And Hi, discipline Manisha. is a form of self-love. Uh, it's not a punishment. It's something that needs to be conditioned to kids. Yeah. 
Sorry, hi Manisha. Hi. <laughs> she wants to say something. <laughs> oh, okay. Wonderful. Um, I, I welcome all uh, Manisha students. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, you know, I hope you, uh, you know, found our session uh, valuable and gained some insights, some very, tips. Very valuable. Yes, very valuable. Thank you. Thank you, Manisha. Definitely. Uh, all the viewers that are you know, subscribed. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Please, uh, please encourage your students to subscribe to our channel, follow us, you know, like us on our page so that they stay inspired. Also on Malini's uh, Instagram, you know, please follow her. Because she, uh, you know, does some amazing work, even on nutrition, diet, and so many other aspects. Yep. If we have any other questions before we close the session. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we don't have questions for the moment. So thank you, everyone, for joining our session. And uh, it's been a real pleasure hosting the yes. session with Malini. Stay I've learned yeah. a lot. <laughs> And uh, stay tuned for our future sessions. We'll keep you posted on some of our new sessions and stay tuned on our channel. And uh, we'll see you soon. Stay happy, stay healthy, and love you, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye. Love and blessings. Bye. So we create workshops. What is it about? It's about all the guys, all the girls.